Welcome to another video from Peacock Archery. Today we're going to be looking at the basics of scoring in target archery. The thing that we shoot at in archery is called the boss and attached to the boss is a paper target face that we use for scoring. There are lots of different types of target face that we use in different situations but it's always the case that the centre is worth the most points decreasing as we move out further towards the edge. The most common type of target face is this one with five distinct coloured bands, white, black, blue, red and gold. We always use the term gold, not yellow and definitely not bullseye, which belongs to a different sport. Inside the gold ring, the inner ring is worth 10 and the outer gold is worth 9. The red band contains the 8 ring and the 7 ring and so on all the way out to the outer white ring, which is worth 1 point. In some cases, mainly in the UK, we use the same target but with only five different scoring zones. In this type of scoring, the whole of the gold is worth nine, the whole of the red is seven, the whole of the blue five, the black three and the white one. The target face will probably still have all ten separate rings on there but when using it in five zone scoring you'll need to ignore those subdivisions. For today though, we're just going to concentrate on the normal ten zone target face. If we take a closer look at the 10 ring, you'll often find that an extra, even smaller ring is inside, known as the X ring or the inner 10. This is still worth 10 points and is used in some competitions to help decide tie break situations. And for some types of bow, in some situations, you actually do have to hit this to score 10 points. OK, so let's take a look at some examples of scoring. Imagine we have three arrows landing here. These would score 9, 8 and 6. If an arrow is crossing or even just touching the borderline between two scoring zones, the arrow will score the higher of the two values. If you and the people you're shooting with in a competitive situation can't agree on whether the arrow is touching the line or not, a judge will be on hand to make a call, often using a magnifying glass to get a closer look. In those situations where the arrow is just barely touching the line, that difference in one point can make a big difference to the outcome of a competition, for example. For that reason, we have some very strict rules that we follow until all the scores have been recorded on the score sheet. The first is that we don't touch any arrows or any part of those arrows. The second is that we don't touch the target face or the boss at all. Let's take a look at why we do this. OK, so let's look at this arrow here, which is in the 9 zone and just very close to the 10 zone. However, we can see when we zoom in that it's not a 10. We can see clearly a gold band all the way around. It's not touching the black line. However, if uh, an unscrupulous archer were to come and just wiggle that arrow or just bend it a little bit when no one was watching, they could actually enlarge the hole uh, in the paper and make it look like it was actually touching the black line as we now see here. So this is why we have this very strict rule that no arrows are allowed to be touched until all the scores have been written down on the score sheet. For the same reason we're not allowed to touch the boss or the target face because uh, creasing or pulling or tugging on the paper could actually enlarge that rip or just move the positions of the of the arrows in the face making it look like it was a higher score. So both of these things are not allowed um, and uh, other archers on the target could challenge someone who does this and certainly the judge would only allow the lower score in that case. So now that we know how to identify what score value an arrow has, let's look at how we record that on score sheets. So typically a score sheet looks something like this with some basic information at the top and then a grid below for recording the arrow values. Let's have a look at how this would look if it's filled in. So we'll start off by filling in our name and the date that we're shooting. Uh, we'll come back and look at the round uh, later. Um, we also need to record the target number. Uh, targets are typically numbered from left to right. Um, and then we need to record some basic information about what bow we're shooting and what category we're in.
When we arrive at the target, let's imagine that we see something like this, with two archers having shot three arrows each. In reality, there could be as many as 24 arrows in a single target face, so archers will often spend a few moments locating and then mentally noting where their own arrows have landed. Then, each archer will call out their scores, pointing at but not touching the knock of each arrow as they do so, so that other archers can verify what scores are being claimed, whilst a different person writes those scores down on the score sheet. By convention, scores are called out from the highest scoring to the lowest scoring. So in this case, for example, the archer with the grey arrows would point at their arrow and say 8, 7, 5. The second archer with the purple arrows would call out 10, 8, 8. So on the score sheet, that would appear like this. The arrow values each written in their own individual box. In this case, the archer has shot three nines. It's really important to call that out as nine, nine, nine. If you say, I've got three nines, the person scoring will probably hear and register the word three first, often writing in three onto the score sheet. At this point, you've got a problem and you need to call the judge over to change the score sheet for you. Don't try and change it yourself or you will invalidate the score sheet. Don't touch anything or pull the arrows out. The judge will come over and check the correct arrow values and modify the score sheet accordingly using a red pen. The judge is the only person on the field allowed to use a red pen and they will initial the judge box to show it was them that did the change. So as the arrows are shot, the score sheet starts to fill up and we calculate subtotals along the way that go in these end total boxes here after each six arrows. So there's the first six with a subtotal of 42, the second six come along at 29 in this case, and then after each dozen, we'll calculate the figures for the whole dozen. 12 hits in total, uh, one gold and a, a dozen total of 42 plus 29, 71 in this case. If an archer misses the target, um, it's very important that we don't write a zero, as has been done here, um, because uh, it's, it's very easy to then just come along and slip a one in front of it and turn that zero into a ten. Instead, if someone misses the target, it's very important that we use the letter M, M for miss, because there's no way that this can be altered. So from then on, the scores start filling up and we go along calculating all of our uh, N totals and our dozen totals and writing those in the boxes here. In the far right column, we also have a running total, uh, which keeps track of the score as we go along. At the end, there are some further totals to fill in, uh, summarising the total number of hits and goals and final score. And then at the end, both the archer and the person doing the score need to sign the score sheet to declare the final result. The one part we haven't spoken about yet is the round. Um, so let's look at that in a bit more detail. A round is a specific number of arrows shot at a specific type of target face at a specific distance or distances. There are quite a lot of different rounds, some of which are specific to the UK, shown on the left, and some that are the same all around the world. The UK rounds tend to have their distances measured in yards and often use five zone scoring, whereas the world archery rounds always use meters for their distances and 10 zone scoring. Rounds are often grouped into families of similar rounds that are the same format but differ in distances with juniors and beginners often shooting the shorter variants. In the UK, the rounds are often named after the towns where they were first shot. So for example, a Portsmouth round is five dozen arrows shot on a 60 centimeter 10 zone target face at 20 yards. If we look at a slightly more complex one, a metric two round is three dozen arrows on a full size 122 centimeter 10 zone face at 60 meters. And then the same again at 50 meters. After that, the target size shrinks to 80 centimeters and three more dozen at 40 meters, followed by a final three dozen at 30 meters. Luckily, you don't need to remember all of these because there are tables which explain all of the rounds. So if we look at the one that we just looked at, this was the metric two round. We can find that on our table here. And we can see here that we're shooting three dozen at 60 on a full size face, three dozen at 50, and then three at 40 on an 80 centimeter face. 
finishing off with that three dozen at 30 metres on an 80 centimetre face. On our website, you'll find comprehensive guides to all of these rounds um, for all of the different bow types. Finally, we'll take a look at handicaps and classifications. The handicap system in archery, just like in other sports, is used to calculate a rating which describes the performance level of an archer. Uh, these range from zero being the best down to 100 and can be used to compare performance between different archers and create a level playing field in some sorts of competitions. The club's records officer will calculate this for you. We use the classification system to recognise key milestones in an archer's performance. There are two different systems, one for outdoor shooting and one for indoor shooting. In the outdoor system, the classifications go from third class, second and first class, then bowman, master bowman, and finally grand master bowman. Indoors, the awards range from H class through to A class. The performance levels needed to achieve these classifications depends on your age, your gender, the type of bow you're shooting. But like everything else in archery, there's a big table of numbers to look these up. So in this case, for a under 16 boy shooting a recurve bow on a metric two round, we can see here the scores that are required to achieve the different classification levels. All of these tables are available to download from the documents on the website. Also, for our beginners, we use another system of recognizing milestones using the World Archery Arrow Award system, which has five levels from white to gold, recognizing key stages in an archer's early development.